What's up everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Modern Hobbyist. Today I'm going to be showing you how I installed an LED ring on my Anycubic i3 Mega. Let's get started. Welcome back everybody, I'm Charlie with Modern Hobbyist. Before we get started, make sure to smash that like button and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of my future videos. As you may have seen in my other videos, I've put my Anycubic i3 Mega inside an enclosure to help me cut down on the noise and to allow me to print better with ABS. And honestly, just because the enclosure looks really cool. So far I love the enclosure and it has worked really well for me, but the biggest downside I have seen is the lighting. The LED strip that I added to the ceiling does a great job of lighting the enclosure, but unfortunately it casts a shadow directly under the print head. This prevents me from seeing what the printer is doing in detail without shining a flashlight under the print head. Furthermore, I like to create time lapses of my prints, and the shadow underneath the print head was making it really hard to get those prints in good detail. To fix this, I decided to install a 12 volt white LED ring directly onto the print head so that all my prints were lit up with a nice and even white light. So without further ado, let's get into the details of the build. The LED ring I used is just a simple 80mm white LED ring I got off AliExpress. These types of LED rings are often used as replacements for running lights on cars or to create the halo effect you see on certain Mercedes grille logos. They come in many sizes, so if you want to go a little bit bigger or smaller, it's entirely up to you. All you need to do is find or design a mounting bracket to attach it to your print head. To mount my LED ring, I found a compatible bracket on Thingiverse that is designed specifically for the Anycubic i3 Mega. The LED ring simply snaps into the bracket, and the bracket then mounts onto two of the heatsink fan's mounting screws as well as one of the part cooling fan's mounting screws. It even has a little duct to feed the power wires through for a clean and flush install. Once I printed off the bracket and installed the LED ring into it, it was time to wire the LED ring up to the printer. To do this, I removed the small PCB on the print head so I could solder the wires to it more easily and disconnected both fans, the hot end, and the thermistor from it. The female header pins are soldered onto some spare holes on the hot end PCB that output 12 volts. I elected to add some female header pins to the PCB and male header pins to the LED ring rather than soldering the LED ring directly to the PCB. This not only made it easier to reassemble the print head, since I could install each component separately, but it also made it so I could easily disconnect the LED ring if I needed to without disassembling the print head all over again. With all the soldering done, I mounted the light bracket to the hot end case by removing the two screws on the hot end cooling fan and the third screw on the part cooling fan. I then placed the LED bracket onto the case and reinstalled all three of the screws. With the bracket mounted, I plugged everything back into the hot end PCB, including the LED wires, and mounted the fan case back into its place on the print head. With everything installed, all that's left is to power the printer on and make sure everything's working correctly. Now, before I let you go, there are a few things I should mention. First, the location that I chose to plug the LEDs into will be supplied with 12 volts when the printer powers on. If you would prefer that the LEDs only turn on when printing, you can wire them up to the hot end cooling fan instead. This way, the LEDs will only turn on when the fan is on, which is pretty close to being on only when the printer's printing. Second, at an estimated 20 milliamps per LED, which is a pretty generous estimate, this ring of 24 LEDs will draw just under a half an amp, which isn't all that much. However, given that I don't know the intended use of the terminals that I wired my LEDs to, nor do I know the current rating for those terminals, you'll have to accept some potential risk that comes with wiring your LED ring the way that I did. I felt comfortable placing that extra current draw on my printer, but that's a decision that you'll have to make for yourself before attempting this upgrade. The last thing that I wanted to point out is that this LED mounting bracket will likely be incompatible with any aftermarket part cooling ducts you may have installed. In the future, I plan to design a sort of part cooling duct LED bracket combo so I can have the best of both worlds, but as I'm not having any noticeable problems with part cooling right now, I opted for the LED ring instead. 
If installing this LED ring still sounds like something you want to tackle, then be sure to check the description for links to all the parts I used. Be sure to smash that like button and let me know in the comments what you thought of this video or if you have any other video ideas for me to make. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click that bell icon so you get notified every time I upload a new video. Otherwise, that's all for now. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.